Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 19. Hey, if you want to download the PDFs or our Excel file, click on the link below the video and you can download the chapter 3 for this finance class uh, files, both PDF and Excel. Hey, oh wow, we get to talk about profitability ratios. Profitability ratios. What is the return? Well, profit margin we've already looked at. That we looked at when we did common sized income statements. It's simply net income divided by sales. That means for every one dollar of sales, what is the net income? For every one dollar of sales, how many pennies of that is our profit? Uh, now, uh, here's some points just simply, uh, uh, if you have a high profit margin, Two, a couple of things could be happening. One is maybe you're managing expenses really well, especially in comparison to some other uh, business, right? Uh, another possibility, what if like Whole Foods, they have a, a kind of a premium product. There's not very many other people that specialize like they do in all organic, all natural foods, so they can charge a little bit more, right? So high profit margin. Uh, it's probably pretty good. Low profit margin is probably not so good. Oh, but wait a second. There are businesses that totally have low profit margins, but maybe they have, instead of a high profit margin generating their profits, maybe they have high volume. Actually, a lot of uh, supermarkets have very low profit margins, but high turnover profit margin, return on assets, sometimes also said return on investment. But return on assets, I like that one because it's just, hey, for every one dollar of asset, what's the profit? Also return on equity, very important ratio. Um, throughout this book and throughout finance, return on equity is everywhere. Now, this is pretty important, net income divided by total equity. So think about this, one dollar of equity. If we paid out all of the net income to the stockholder, right, it would, this ratio would give you how many pennies they get for every dollar goes to uh, the stockholder. Now think about this, even our net income, we saw this on the income statement, net income goes to two places, it's either paid out as dividends or it's kept in the company. And the account that net income is kept in is called retained earnings. And retained earnings are plowed back into the company and then you buy new assets. So this really reflects um, everything the stockholder is interested in because dividends, well that's cash to the equity holder which is good, but also if they're plowing back lots of retained earnings and buying new assets, presumably the company is growing and the stock price will grow. So that's why return on equity is such a common measure and a lot of people look at it. Now we want to talk about this a little bit more. You can read some of these notes if you want, but we want to talk about this because there's an amazing uh, thing we can do to ret return on equity. It's called the DuPont analysis. Now, in chapter 00, we talked a little bit about math, and we talked about the number one. The number one is very important. And whoever the people at DuPont that thought this up, they knew about the number one. So check this out. What's net income divided by equity times one times one? Well, anything times one is still netting the same original number, which in our case is net income divided by equity. But watch this, we're going to choose the type of number one we want. Anything by, divided by itself is one. So sales times sa sales divided by sales is the number one times asset divided by asset, that's the number one. Well, guess what? When we set up this way, net income over equity times sales over sales times asset over assets, multiplication in the uh, denominator and the numerator can be done in any order, right? So right now we have E for equity, S for sales, A for asset. But we could just as easily put this A under the S right here, so it would be SA, or this S under the net income and the E over here. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take this A, put it right here, the E, put it right here, and the S, and put it right here. Now, what do we got? That looks like profit margin. 
this looks like asset turnover, and this looks like equity multiplier. Boom, three very important ratios. This tells you the operational efficiency. This one tells you how many dollars of sales or revenue we get for every $1 of asset. And this tells us the equity multiplier, or looking at leverage. Remember, this, anytime we increase our debt, this uh, is a number bigger than one. So the more debt we have, so let's say we have um, uh, half debt and half equity, then this is the number two. And you can multiply it by these to increase it. So by increasing debt, by breaking apart return on equity and looking at any one of these components, it can tell us what it is that actually increased the return on equity. So if one year we saw 1.5 here, and the next year, you know, return on equity went up really a lot, and you see 2.5 here, you can say, ah, that's how they did it. They got a bunch of more debt. All right, but each one of these tells us something important. Operation, efficiency of our assets generating sales, and the amount of leverage. Now, let's notice a couple other things. Well, net income over sales. Notice there's, um, when we multiply these together, it actually gives us uh, return on asset. And technically, the way you do it is, if you have a number in the, new, the, de, the numerator and the denominator, you can cross them out, right? And you're left with just net income over assets, which is return on assets, right? So these two things are return on assets. So we can rewrite it still another way. Return on assets times the equity multiplier. So sometimes you'll see it just like this. Sometimes you'll see broken it, up, it broken apart. So you have three component parts to help explain how return on equity changed. Other times you see it just like this. You just want to see the return on assets and the equity multiplier. Still further, right? if we do this little calculation, which we did in chapter 00, zero we actually looked at this, right? Assets are really equity plus debt divided by equity. We break it apart. E over E is 1. That gives us the 1. And D over E is uh, the debt to equity ratio. So a lot of times, even uh, you'll see it written this way, return on equity. Hey, we got our return on assets times 1 plus debt to equity. Now, this is seems all unnecessary, really. But it really, they're all different ways to write the same thing. And why do we have so many different ways? Because this is a very common number. People look at it all the time. It, it's very important. So we can break it apart and see slightly different perspectives with each one of these. Now, I'm going to go over to Excel. There's a little example here you can look at. Um, actually, let's go ahead and look at it. We have uh, 98 numbers, 99. Well, return on equity, 200 divided by 1,000. Equity, right? 0.2. Oh, but wait a second. The next year, it's 200, and equity went up, right? So it's 1400. Zero, zero. So we make the division, and we get this number. So return, even though the profits, uh, the net income stayed the same. We issued a bunch more equity, and return on equity went down a lot. That's called uh, diluting the the equity, right? You buy, you buy, a, uh, you issue a lot more stocks, right? And there's a lot more owners to have to split up the earnings. All right, but let's look at this. If we break this apart, here's our profitability. Net income divided by sales. So 0.033. Here's our asset efficiency, our sales divided by our assets. Three, three dollars for every one dollar of asset. And then our equity multiplier, it's two, right? 2,000 assets, 1,000 equity. So boom, boom, boom. Now looked at when we do the same numbers from 99, we can see why it went down more explicitly, right? Here's the profit margin in 1998. Profit margin actually went up a little teeny bit. So that's not the profit margin isn't what caused the return on equity to go down. Here, this one, 3. Oh, so that one went down. We're not being as efficient uh, generating revenue from our assets. And finally, we issued a bunch of um, equity, right? So our 
equity multiplier went down. So it was efficient use of assets and our um, use of leverage that caused our return on equity to go down. Now let's go over to Excel. We're on the sheet that's called uh, Whole Food Markets International DuPont. And then here's the answer over here. Let's just go ahead, before we do our DuPont analysis, let's just do our straight profit margin, return on assets, return on equity. Equals, and we're doing it for 2006. So we're going to say uh, net income divided by sales. Okay, so 3.6% or 0 0.036 as a, as a decimal or a proportion. All right, equals net income divided by our total assets. That's return on assets. Okay, so 0 0.09. This one, oh, let's do one more. This is the uh, return on equity. So we're going to take our net income divided by our total equity. Okay, return on equity, 0.14. So what all is it, what does this mean, right? For every $1 of sales we brought in, 3.6 cents of that dollar uh, went to profit. The rest was consumed by expenses. For every $1 of asset, we generated 9.9, .9, about 10 cents worth of profit. This one says for every $1 of equity, there was about 14 and a half cents of uh, net income or profit. Now, let's break apart. I want to do profit margin, asset turnover, and equity multiplier. Three of them, because that, that explains three components of return on equity, and then I want to actually multiply and see that they are exactly uh, equal if you do it this way or straight our way right there. Because so when we get over here, we better get the same number. This we just did for uh, 2006, but we're going to do these numbers for 5 and 6. So net income divided by our sales. And then equals for 2006, net income divided by sales. So 2.9% to 3.6%, or as a decimal, that to that. All right, our asset turnover equals our net income. This is 2005 divided by our assets. Oops, I did that wrong. Equals sales divided by our assets. Equals all the sales for 2006 divided by our assets at the uh, ending number on the balance sheet. So from 5 to 6, we went up, right? Uh, we were a little bit more efficient in generating dollars uh, of sales from our assets. Equity, we're going to say total assets, boop, divided by our total equity. And then total assets divided by our equity. So we're a little bit more leveraged now. Went up a little bit. Now let's multiply these. All right, I'm going to use the product function. Product, and I'm going to multiply these. One, two, three. Now we didn't do a uh, calculation for 2005, but let's just do it real quick. That divided by total equity. I got my fingers crossed. Yep, exactly the same. Now, this is r our relative cell references, so we can copy it down. And ding, 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 we get the same number we calculated over here, except for now, we have more information. We can look at each one of these component parts and figure out why uh, return on equity went up or down. Now, the product of these two equals return on assets. So let's check that. And in fact, um, I probably should have just gone ahead and maybe I'll leave that like that. So when you download it, the template will be just like this. Uh, return on assets if I drag that over. So 
now we have s the return on assets was 7%, and then the profit margin here was 2.9. Okay, and well, let's come down here, and we're going to multiply. Do the same thing. You know, we can use the product, or we can just go like this times this. So that's profit margin times asset turnover, and those are the two component parts to return on assets. And sure enough, we get the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and drag it down. And so now it's multiplying those. And sure enough, we get that exact number there. Um, one final version of this is, uh, do we know the debt to equity? We don't. We have our, our debt to equity. We didn't uh, calculate that anywhere, but we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just going to bring these, because this is return on assets. So I'm going to uh, click here, equals, and get my return on assets. I don't need to recalculate that. And then copy it down. So that one's just looking there. And now I'm going to go equals 1 plus debt. And this is for 2005. So total debt divided by total equity. I cannot copy this one down. I have to redo this equals 1 plus, because the numbers are not below 1 plus. And now I have to go over to 2006 and say debt divided by equity. All right, now I want to check. I better if I multiply return on assets times the equity multiplier. Remember, that's a different way to, to write the equity multiplier. This times this. That is just so cool. Look at that. I got the same number there and there. All right. That, this video was a little bit about um, profit ratios and the DuPont analysis. When we come back, we have a few more ratios to look at. We'll see you next video.